Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Worship Together Across the Diocese. Today I'm going to shout God loves us all the time. Amen. Now last week Christians all over the world were celebrating the Feast of Epiphany where they were remembering the visit of the wise men to Jesus, Mary and Joseph. And I'm hoping that you're going to remember that story because I'm going to just briefly tell it and then tell you about the next part of the story, which we often forget to tell because we do the wise men and the visit and, and then Christmas is finished and we're all back to school. But this story, is really important. So on their way to find Jesus following the star, the wise men called in at the palace in Jerusalem because, well, where do you find a king? In a palace. But they didn't find baby Jesus. They found King Herod. And Herod, he was not happy about the idea that there was a new king somewhere. So he spoke to his advisors and he said, you know, there's these men that have arrived, they've told me this. And the wise advisors said, oh yes, it says in the prophecy that there will be a new king, a Messiah uh, born in Bethlehem. So Herod went back to the wise men and he said, well, the advisors tell me that this new king's going to be born in Bethlehem. So you go and find him and then come back and tell me where he is so that I can also visit him. So the wise men set off. They found Mary and Jesus and Joseph and they were probably in a little house by now. And Jesus was growing because it was a little while after the shepherds visiting. And they gave their gifts and we all know that story, the gifts of frankincense and gold and myrrh. And then they left. But they were warned in a dream not to go back and see Herod. So they didn't. They went a different way. I wonder who warned them in that dream. Mm, I bet you know. So Herod is now sat in his palace, getting more and more worked up and cross about the fact that, you know, there's this new king somewhere in Bethlehem and he doesn't know where. So he decides to tell his soldiers to go to Bethlehem and just to kill all the children, all the boys who are under the age of two. How horrible is that? So now Jesus was in massive danger. And Joseph had a dream. And in his dream, he was warned. I wonder who warned him. Now, when we are warned about something, we perhaps uh, hear a siren or a bell, like the fire alarm. Or we hear a dog barking. Or a, a lighthouse with its light beaming out, warning of danger. But Joseph was warned in a dream and that dream told him that he must take Jesus and Mary to safety. So off they went. They packed up everything in a hurry and travelled, probably again on a donkey, just like this picture is showing. Across a landscape that looks like this, with roads that were dusty and dangerous 
and they just kept going and kept going. They were running for their lives and Joseph had to keep Jesus and Mary safe. And sometimes we, we focus a lot on thinking about how amazing Mary was, because she was. But actually, Joseph does an incredibly important thing by keeping Jesus safe and taking him on a journey miles and miles and miles to safety in Egypt. And therefore, Jesus and Mary and Joseph became refugees. Now, I think you might have heard that word on the news, talking about different people leaving their homes, running for places of safety, risking their lives, travelling on small boats like this one, to cross the sea to a country where they'll be safe. And when they get there, they often have to live in these camps where it's just awful, but it's better than being in a country where they are in danger. And it might be a country that's at war. It might be a country where the government doesn't like them. So places like Af Afghanistan and Syria and some of the countries in Africa, people are running for their lives and they are refugees. And so remembering the story of Jesus and Mary and Joseph going to Egypt reminds us that Jesus was a refugee as well. And if Jesus was a refugee, well, we'd be like, come on, Jesus, come in, come in, come and stay safe in my house. And all these people that are in danger, we must welcome them too. Because that's what Jesus would want us to do. Jesus said to love one another. God loves us and we must love one another. So there's lots of politics and complicatedness all around this and big words and difficulties. But at the end of the day, welcome should be the word we use. And there must have been somebody who welcomed Jesus and Mary and Joseph into Egypt because they stayed there for quite a while. Because Herod was king for quite a few years longer and they couldn't go back to Bethlehem until it was safe. And so they stayed in Egypt until Joseph was told in a dream it was safe to go back again. And they went back actually to Nazareth. And this is a picture of what Nazareth looks like today. Quite different to how it would have looked like when Jesus went home there. But it's always good to remind ourselves of what these places look like today and that they're still there. These cities and towns and roads and places that Jesus visited and lived. So that story is called the flight to Egypt and of course they didn't fly but they fled quickly, speedily. They moved as fast as they could to keep Jesus safe. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, we thank you for our time together this morning. And we just pray for all those people around the world who, like you, with Mary and Joseph, have to run to places of safety because they're in such danger where they live. And so as those people leave their homes and, and they travel distances and it's dangerous and they live in camps and because they want to stay safe, wherever they go, we pray that they will find welcome and safety, just as you found welcome and safety in Egypt all those years ago. We pray for your blessings upon each and every one of us this morning in your name. 
Amen. So I hope you have a great day today and I'll see you again soon. Take care. Bye.